but you wanna learn how to create videos like the content bug. Well, the other day I was on Instagram and I received a DM from one of you guys saying that another YouTube creator ended up coming out with a video talking about how to create YouTube thumbnails like the content bug, like me. And although I think it's really awesome that other people are not only talking about my strategies and really just trying to help you guys so that you guys can grow on YouTube just like I have done, I really think that if you guys wanna learn how I do certain things, you should really hear it from me and get the real strategies that go behind it. So in today's video, this is really going to be the start of a new series on my channel. I wanna do a lot of videos sharing how to do things like the content bug. So whether that is designing my thumbnails, which I do have another video on, so I will include that right here for you guys, or how I create my videos, how I plan out my videos, how I even like take it and edit my Instagram photos all by myself. Whatever you guys wanna learn, I am an open book. I wanna be 100% transparent with you guys and share exactly how I do things. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can create videos just like me, and I'm gonna go over all the settings within my camera, like how I get this image quality within my videos, the planning process, my filming process, everything is going to be broken down in this video. So there's really, really a lot to cover and I hope you're ready to get started. First things first, I wanna go over some basics. So you guys probably already know this, but I do not batch my content. So I know a lot of creators that talk about YouTube, growing on YouTube, being a bit more efficient with your time when it comes to filming YouTube videos. They will recommend that you film several YouTube videos in one day. I personally do not like that strategy. I don't like to do that for my own brand just because of how unique my YouTube videos are and the process that goes into creating those videos, which I will talk about in a bit. Also, when it comes to what I wear within my YouTube videos. I even did this this morning. I pulled out my phone. I took a look at what I was wearing in all of the videos that I have shot this month and made sure that I wasn't wearing this shirt. So I do really plan out my outfit as well as my hair to make sure that it is not the same in back-to-back -back videos, which I know is silly and probably something that I do not need to pay attention to, but I do and I just want to be honest with you guys. Now, I feel like the one thing everyone always wants to know is the equipment that I'm using because a lot of people think that if they get the same gear as me, then they're going to be able to create the same quality image as me. When in reality, reality, if you are an amateur videographer and you are given a camera that's, let's say, like over $5,000, someone that's actually a professional videographer could probably create a better visual from just a phone compared to what you are creating on a really, really expensive camera. This is the Canon EOS M50 right here, and I just want to show you guys it does have a flip out screen so I can see myself, and I did choose this camera because I wanted to get a mic on top, which we will talk about in a little bit. It's really because of the settings within this camera that I get the quality of image that I do. So if you guys already have a Canon M50 and you want to know what settings I'm using, I want to break that down for you guys. Sadly, I do not have another nice camera to film this on, so I'm currently filming on my iPhone right here, but I am going to turn on my camera. I always have it set to this movie setting, so you guys wanna have that selected. But right here, once you turn it on, this Q option will pop up in the top right-hand corner, and this will give you just a quick menu. So the first thing I wanna say, autofocus. I always have it on this setting because it will follow my face, and filming by myself makes it really easy when I have that selected. For the frame rate, this is so important. Guys, I have it on full high definition, and it's 20. 9.97. I do not film in 4K, personal choice, but I want to tell you guys that. Right over here, this is the white balance. I always have my white balance selected on custom and it's set to B2. Now, I say always, actually, if I click out of this, I change some of the settings. So when I click on this flash button, this is actually going to change my white balance. So I can always slide over and let's say, like, if I'm filming in my kitchen, this one or this one is the best with the lighting that I have in my kitchen. The other settings I want to show you guys, if I click on this menu option right here on the camera and then the third one over you guys will see white balance again so if you want to change that here you can do that here but picture style guys this is an absolute huge one so I'm going to click on picture style I've actually tried out a few of these different settings based off of recommendations from other people but what I like best is auto I'm going to click on this info button right over here on the right hand side so I like my sharpness to be at six my contrast negative one saturation two color tone negative one and that's exactly how I get this visual right here now I do have to say in terms of the white balance I have mine selected at custom B2 and basically what that's doing it's adding more cool tones within my image I like a really cool toned image but if you do not I wouldn't have it set to those settings and another thing is if you are a vlogger and you get more just like in the moment shots you have different lighting all the time I would not have your white balance set to custom I would have it set to auto or if you can take some time really pay attention to the lighting and see what other settings that are built into your camera look best with that lighting situation but really if you are going to just be picking up your camera and filming immediately have it on auto 
and your camera will do all the work for you. Another big aspect of creating this exact visual is using studio lights. Yes, I do not use a ring light. I feel like a lot of YouTubers do. I have two studio lights. I've actually got one set up right here because it is a cloudy or rainy day out here in Rochester and I would not be able to film today if it wasn't for these studio lights. So I do use these for just about all of my YouTube videos, but I will say I do prefer filming with natural light. So this is actually in my sunroom. I have got a big skylight right above me and uh, I just, there's something about natural light. One, it makes it a lot easier to film your YouTube videos because then you're not always moving around your gear for every different shot because trust me, that's what I do when I film my YouTube videos. But I also, I really just like the picture quality. I think the colors are a little bit brighter and I really do like filming with natural light. So if you can definitely just film near a big window. I do that all the time. Or if you need studio lights like me because you live in just a dreary, rainy and snowy place, get yourself some studio lights. Mine are linked in the description bar down below. And then the last thing you need to know in terms of my gear is that I do have a microphone. So I'm currently using the Rode Video Micro that is attached to the top of my camera right now. And this is only my third YouTube video filming with it. But my office is very, very echoey and just using the built-in mic on my camera, it really does have good quality. So if you're getting started with the Canon M50, really the mic within your camera is good quality. But my office is so, so echoey. So every time I was filming a YouTube video, I had to lay blankets and cushions down on the ground. And it was kind of a pain in the butt, especially with how often I move my lights around for all the different shots that I get. So now having this mic on my camera, I no longer have to do that. And I just think that the sound quality is so, so much better. With all my equipment and gear out of the way, I feel like it is finally time that we can actually talk about my strategy, which is the biggest part that goes into creating my YouTube videos. Yes, obviously the equipment does make an impact because that's how we get this quality of image, like I've said a million times already. But the planning and actual filming process is probably a lot more detailed than you guys would think. Actually, the other night when I was mapping out my YouTube video talking about audience retention rate, I got into bed at around eight o'clock because I knew that I was going to outline that video. And it took me over an hour to figure out what I was going to say, the flow of the video, doing all of my research. I mean, there's really a lot that goes into it. So I have shared this several times before, but I do have a notebook right here, which is where I jot down all of my ideas in terms of my YouTube videos. So whether it's just randomly just like brainstorming that goes into this as well as all of my video outlines. Now I do get a lot of questions about, do you script your whole entire videos? Like, do you come up with everything you're going to say? No, right now I'm winging this. And honestly on my outline, it only says planning process outline all videos. That is all I put on there. So I really do let myself have some freedom to just say whatever I want because I realize my videos are a lot more natural that way. But guys, there's a lot, <sighs> the way that I've been filming my YouTube videos recently, I feel like I just really need to break this down for you guys because it has really changed. With my filming style, I've always tried to do something a little bit different. And obviously I got started on YouTube with zero subscribers. I had to learn how to grow. I had to learn the algorithm and I got started the exact same way as you guys by watching other YouTubers that talked about YouTube strategies. And although those videos are important and informative, sometimes they didn't feel like they were fun to watch. So if I just wanted to waste some time and I needed maybe like a distraction while I was making dinner, I would never turn to those YouTube videos. I would more so go to the lifestyle niche or vloggers and I would watch their videos for fun instead. So when I got started talking about YouTube or even when I was talking about blogging and Pinterest at the time, I wanted to find a way to make my videos fun. So even if you guys weren't interested in the information that I was including within my videos, you would still want to watch them because you honestly just enjoy the video. So the very first thing that I do within every video, and you guys know this, it is so, so obvious. I jump around and I change scenes often. And that is one of the easiest ways to get around a talking head kind of video because most people will just sit in one spot and then they will talk the whole entire time. If you jump around, it just adds a little bit bit more interest. The other thing that I started to do within my videos is add more B-roll or like vlog style shots. So I will, if I'm getting like a bottle of water, I will show you guys filling up the water or if I'm getting a matcha or going to Glen Edith, I will include that within my YouTube videos. And it more so helps to set the scene as well as make you guys feel more a part of my life, which I really enjoy. But actually the biggest change to my YouTube videos came recently when I watched a video by Shelby Church. At the beginning of this year, she launched a video sharing how much money she made from YouTube ads revenue in 2019. And you guys already know, I love that topic and it's something that I share on my own channel. So when it appeared on my homepage, of course I ended up clicking on it and I watched that video the whole way through, addicted to everything she was saying, the way that she was filming her video. And I just became obsessed. I just thought that it was such an amazing quality video. So before that point in time, what I used to do, I would outline my YouTube videos and I would just have bullet points of what I wanted to talk about. And then I would start 
filming. So I would use one memory card. I would get a ton, a ton of different takes, different scenes around my office. And I would stop and start my camera whenever I was like switching a scene or if I was like doing a different bullet point or something in my outline. That's really how I'd film my YouTube videos. And it would take me an hour to two hours. And after all the footage was done, I would upload it to my computer and then I would start editing. Well, in the background of her videos, what I noticed is that actually on her computer was her editing the video that she was currently filming. And I have no idea why I didn't ever think of this before, but it looked like, now I'm not sure if this is actually her strategy, but it looked like while she was actually filming her video, she was also editing her video to make sure that it flowed nice and that she knew what to say next. At least this is my theory and this is what I'm now doing within my video. So you guys may have noticed at least the past week or two in the background of all of my videos is the current video that I'm working on because after a couple of scenes, I will upload it to iMovie. I will actually break it down into the cut that I like and the flow and I will watch it the whole way through, figure out what I wanna say next so everything just goes so, so smoothly. It's like fricking butter. downside to filming my YouTube videos like this is that I got started at 10 o'clock this morning. It is now two o'clock already. I didn't eat anything for lunch, so I had to go pick something up just because I didn't have anything meal prepped and it was gonna take me too long to make food. So I am going to eat this and then we're gonna continue on with this video because I'm guessing I still have another hour to two hours left of filming. And now you may be wondering why just the last few minutes of this YouTube video is going to take me so long to film. So here's the reality of it. Obviously you guys know that I film my YouTube videos in chunks. So for every new scene, I allow myself to pause reconnect and figure out what I'm going to say next. I feel like that's really obvious. There's no way I could just talk the whole way through my YouTube videos with the changing scenes that I get. But for every different scene, I obviously have to move my tripod. So sometimes you guys are on my standing tripod. Other times you are on this tripod and I have to reposition my camera every single time. I also have to change up my lights every single time. Sometimes I have to rearrange my desk so that I can position you guys on my desk. And just that takes a couple of minutes between each scene. And then when I'm actually filming, I do give myself a little bit of grace because I make a lot of mistakes. And you're probably wondering, and now you're probably wondering, and you're probably wondering, and now you're probably wondering, and now you're probably wondering. I mean, you guys have seen my bloopers. I definitely make mistakes. So I do film each scene, I would say anywhere between five to 15 times, which may seem like a lot, but if I'm going to put this much time and effort into my YouTube videos, I do want to make sure that it's as good as possible. And another reason why it takes me so long is because I'm actually editing the YouTube video as I'm filming it. So after a couple of scenes, I will import the data into my iMovie and I will cut it down so basically what that means to me is I will cut out any mistakes that I make, any bloopers that I want to keep, as well as any long breaths. You guys know that I do not like to have those within my YouTube videos. So I will do like the initial cut through. And then once I'm actually done my filming process, I already have basically the whole outline of my YouTube video done. And then I really just have to focus on the little details such as the overlays, the sound, the music, and all of that stuff. Like there is a decent amount still left to do, but this initial cut through I do while I am filming the video. And I really do think it helps me with the transitions within my video. I better understand how to transition into the next scene as well as what to say because you guys have probably noticed I use but now and so a lot as my transitions. And if I wasn't looking over what I was saying every single time, I could guarantee you that I would continue saying now, now, now all the freaking time. So by doing this, I have a little bit better understanding of what I just said so I don't repeat myself. Transitions are a little bit smoother with actually switching scenes as well as what I am saying. So I really, really do love this style and I'm hoping that you guys have liked my videos recently. And really, we only talked about my camera gear and my filming process. There's clearly so much more more that goes into creating a YouTube video, but if I dove into editing right now, this video would be over 30 minutes long, and I don't want to do that to you guys. So probably the next episode in this series of How the Content Bug Does It, I will be sharing how I edit my YouTube videos. So if there's any specific questions you have on that, please let me know in the comment section down below so I can include them within the YouTube video. Otherwise, if there are any other videos that you want to see in this series, anything specific that you want to learn how I do it, let me know in the comment section down below and I will create that for you guys. But otherwise, I will see you guys back here on Tuesday and Friday with the new YouTube video. Bye guys. Hold. Now, mm, yeah, screw it. What? Fudge. I can't talk about it. What? Right here. <clears throat> what am I saying, girl? How do I want this scene to flow? Uh, well, at least none of that was good. Get out of here. <laughs> I can't say that. That's ridiculous. No. One. Oh, wow.
Hold on, we're gonna redo that. Ooh, sometimes like I get talking so fast and then I forget to breathe. Oh my god, my mic is like facing the wrong way. Catherine Elizabeth. I'm so not used to having a mic. Oh.